Lizzie. Mm. Yes, Mother. What is your opinion of this sad business of Jane's? Well, for my part, I never speak of it, as I told my sister Phillips the other day. But I cannot find out. She saw anything of him in London. Well, Mr. Bingley is a very undeserving young man. Well, my comfort is, I'm sure she will die of a broken heart, and then he'll be sorry for what he's done. The regiment is going away, and your father will not take the girls to Brighton, no matter how much they cry. I remember, five and twenty years ago, when Colonel Miller's regiment went away, and I cried for two days together. I thought I should have broke my heart. <laughs> <sighs> Good heavens, what is to become of us? What are we to do? My heart will break. I shall die of boredom. If we could but go to Bright, mm. Papa is so disagreeable. <gasps> Lord, I have not slept for a week. Mama must have a party for the officers, no matter what Papa says. Yes, and we can go. Yes, why? Elizabeth. Yes, Father. I want to speak with you. Sit down, Elizabeth. Mrs. Forster, young Mrs. Forster, wife of the unfortunate Colonel, wishes Lydia to accompany her with the regiment to Brighton. And the house would be a good deal quieter if she went. They are only recently acquainted. It is an acquaintance of three months, Lizzie. And three months these days passes for eternity. Do not let her go, Father. She is so impetuous. And the temptations of Brighton must be greater than home. Lydia will never be easy until she has shown herself in some public place or other. And we can never expect her to do it with so little expense or inconvenience to the family as with Colonel and Mrs. Forster with the regiment in Brighton. Father, Lydia's behaviour is already a great disadvantage to us all, her manner being so imprudent. If you only knew the trouble that had already risen from it. What? Has she frightened away some of your lovers? Well, little Lizzie... But do not be downcast. Such squeamish youths as cannot bear to be acquainted with a little um, absurdity are not worth a regret. Absurdity, Father? To be vain, ignorant, idle and absolutely uncontrolled without any attraction beyond youth and a tolerable person. Her spirits are exuberant, Father. And if you do not take the trouble to cure them, she soon will be past curing. Her character will be fixed, and she will at sixteen be the most determined flirt that ever made herself and her family ridiculous. And Kitty will follow where Lydia leads, and we shall all be drawn into their disgrace. Sit down, Elizabeth. We shall have no peace at Longbourn if Lydia does not go to Brighton. Colonel Forster's a sensible man and will keep her out of mischief. And luckily she is too poor to be the object of prey to anyone. Common flirts are too a penny in Brighton, and Lydia will be of less importance there than here. And, my love, you and Jane will be respected and valued wherever you go, and will not appear to less advantage for having a couple of, or I may say three, very silly sisters. <laughs>